my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much and remain blessed. And in what has become a daring nature and attitude of these terrorists moving closer to the FCT, the nation's capital. I'm being joined tonight by a former national uh, uh, lawmaker, uh, legislator, Senator Shewu Sani. Thank you indeed, Senator Shewu Sani, for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. It was first the, the threat into the northwest region of the country, but after the attack on the Kujay Correctional Facility, it does look like there is some kind of gravitation of this terrorist element to the FCT Abuja. Now, for what we saw in Kuali, the um, uh, the uh, engagement of the Presidential Guards Brigade and what we have heard as a statement coming from them, what are your initial thoughts about where we are at and the war that we are up against? Uh, thank you for having me. Well, um, to every Nigerian that has been following events in this country in the last few years, we all know that the states that surround Abuja, Niger, Kaduna, a northern part of Kogi State, and by indirect extension, Plateau State, are today infested with banditry and terrorism. Now, you cannot expect Abuja to be an island. Uh, now, Kaduna Abuja Road has been unsafe for many years. Uh, government has proven incapable of addressing that problem. So, as the states that surround Abuja are unsafe, so also uh, the contagion of insecurity will naturally uh, be with the people of Abuja. So if we thought that we have an island of security in the country, now the truth is upon us that gradually terrorists and bandits are moving to the suburbs of Abuja, uh, launching attacks, kidnapping people, and not only soft targets, but they are also going after security establishment and apparatuses. This is a clear indication that the government is losing control. But I think it's also important that we should appreciate and recognize the sacrifices made by members of the armed forces, because I believe that this program is being watched by widows and orphans of policemen, soldiers who have lost their own breadwinners. So we appreciate those services, but in the general sense, as a nation and as a government, there is an evident failure in terms of protecting this country and protecting our people. And I believe these are some of the issues that were raised and were used and were capitalized upon by those in the position of authority before 2015 to be where they are today. And this is where we have found ourselves. What has started in Zamfara spreads to Kaduna State, Niger, Sokoto, and now it's upon us here in Abuja. So if we thought that this is an oasis of peace, then we are now in open uh, face with reality yeah. of the situation on the ground. And let me ask the question. Uh, we thought at first that it was a war in the northeast. Suddenly, we saw the gravitation towards the northwest. What is it that is changing, that is making the stories move south? Is it that they have been bombarded so badly that that place, the northeast region where they used to be, is no longer safe for them? Well, what we are seeing in Nigeria today is an evolution of uh, terrorism and terrorists. Well, we know very well that this started with Boko Haram in the northeastern part of Nigeria. And Boko Haram split it into uh, Ansaru. And then uh, now we have the affiliate of 
ISIS now calling themselves ISWAP in the West African sub-region. And then these terror groups with the brand names, the Ansaru, the Daru Islam, the ISWAP, the Boko Haram, are now carved territories for themselves. And now we have new entrants, which are the bandits. And there is a difference somehow between bandits and terrorists. Uh, bandits have no any ideological or theocratic agenda. They are simply about kidnapping people and extorting money from their families. So after they have had enough of occupation of space, of unleashing terror and evil in Northeast, now they move to the Northwest. And in the Northwest, Zamfara State became a hub and parts of central part of Kaduna, which was in Brindingwari area, where you have uh, a very large colonial game reserve that has been uninhabited, and that became a breeding ground for uh, terrorist groups. So right now, uh, Nigeria, particularly Northwest, is being occupied by terror groups that have mapped out territories for themselves. And those that are launching attacks in Abuja are perhaps those that are within the location of Kaduna and Niger State. And for a country like ours, I believe that we need to do the right thing because uh, Benin Republic is not facing the kind of problem we are facing. Niger Republic, despite that ISIS were launching an attack in between the border of Burkina Faso and Niger, but their situation is better, and Chad and Cameroon. Then how can a nation of 211 million people be unable to protect and defend ourselves with trillions of naira pumped in in security and defense, on security and defense? So the point is that there is need for responsibility, because no matter how much you pump into the security and defense apparatus. If people who are holding position of authority as head of agencies are not being held accountable, such things will happen. Let, me, yes. let, let me hop in quickly yes. and try to find out. You are from Kaduna State. You perhaps be able to tell us what exactly is going on. Um, after the attack on the, the Abuja bound train, and the abduction of over 60 people on that train, uh, there were insinuations from the terrorists that carried out the attack that the, the forests of Kaduna State or the northwestern region of the country have become uh, sweet for them to operate. I mean, I, I don't know if you also got to hear that. Why that? Well, uh, for a very se a serious country that takes security matters seriously, uh, that should not be an excuse for not taking action on those terrorists. The northwestern part of Nigeria is basically savanna for those who study geography. So we don't have that thick forest where it will be so impossible for modern technology to detect where they are. The point is that the will is not there on the side of the government and also security agencies are failing. Uh, in the 21st century, it is technically impossible for you to hide anywhere in the northwestern part of Nigeria without being seen. These terrorists use the phones we are using, the SIM card we are using, they communicate and they collect ransom. It's happening every day. Have they infiltrated most part of where they operate? Especially because the reason I'm asking is, from the report that we got and the what we hear from the eyewitness account was that after the attack at the Kujie Correctional Facility, they traveled in droves and traveling out of the uh, uh, peripheral of the perimeter of Abuja city to some communities around Abuja, it would take some time. They would have needed some transportation means of doing that. How difficult could it have been to locate them days or weeks after? Could they have infiltrated some of the communities? Well, let, let me just be very frank with you. Uh, this is not rocket science. People in Kazuna, in part of Sokoto, Zamfara, Kaduna State, both northern and southern, and Niger State know very well 
that these bandits or terrorists have only their motorcycle and AK-47. That's what they have. And they successfully launch operations and take hours to do that without actions being taken. It's as if we wait for them to attack before we react. And it happens in this way. Uh, Federal College of Adi uh, 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 Aggregate Mechanization in Kaduna was attacked. There was no rescue mission. The parents have to pay ransom to secure the release of their children. Bethel Baptist High School was attacked. Parents have to pay ransom to secure the release of their children. Greenfield University was attacked in Kaduna State. People have to pay ransom to secure the release of their children. Now, the train passengers between Kaduna and Abuja also are paying ransom without any action being taken from the side of the are government. Are ransom? And, of course, ransom is being paid, of course. Mean those people who are... Who they have released? said it. I was about to join their protest uh, some times ago, but it was shifted. The families, the families of the victims of Kaduna Abuja train are paying ransom in hundreds of millions, and nobody is doing anything. And when you ask security, they will tell you, we are listening to their conversation. We are monitoring their movement. We know what they are. So what kind of country is this? You know what they are. You're listening to their conversation, and you are doing nothing about it. What do you think could be the solution? Well, there are two ways we can do this thing. First of all, technology is very important. It is impossible for anybody to take hostages in 10, 20, 30, 40, 100, and hide them anywhere in the northwestern part of Nigeria without anybody seeing them. Secondly, bandits and terrorists recruit informants between the villages of Karuna, Abuja, and Niger. And they are informants. If now you are shown you're going to land in any of the villages in Kasana or Sokoto or Zamfara, it will take the next few minutes. The bandits will be informed that you are there. So what has, what has our security agency done in terms of recruiting informants and using them to source information. If just outskirts of Abuja here is unsafe for every Nigerian, you ask where is the government? Because as they attacked Koji prison, they are launching attacks or they are trying to attack the law school. We should know that the Namdi Azikwe International Airport is not very far from them. So what will happen? Will we sit down until they launch attacks and then we react? For how long will our government take to take action on all these things here? I can't imagine that with all the monies we have spent, over a billion dollar for Tokano, $995 million for uh, helicopters for the military, we can still not protect our people. Is there a way that we can immediately and urgently fix this problem? It is possible and is doable. And first of all is to use the people in the villages. Uh, people right now are shifting, balancing their loyalty either with the government or with the terrorists. Because if they volunteer any information to the government, they can be targeted and be extinguished by the terrorists. So we need to win them over. Because when you win the population over, it's, it will be impossible for terrorists to move. Secondly, technology is very important. I want to see a drone station in Suleja Ozba that can launch attacks on their camps anywhere within Niger, Kaduna, and Kazuna and return back. None is there. Please, just take a flight if you are coming from Lagos. When you are approaching the Namdi Azikiwe airport, just peep through the window and see whether there is any serious presence of security agencies that can stop a band of 300 terrorists if they decide to, decide to attack, attack our airports. Uh, That's a fact. We, we hope that uh, something is being done urgently um, in all of this situation. Thank you so much indeed, Senator Shilson, for coming on tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. But well, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm sure Kim Ali, bye for now. And all of you will suffer if you don't repent. You will suffer. Mark my words somewhere, you will suffer if you don't repent from your evil ways. You take money from murderers and from killers to suppress the truth. Biden doesn't know what is happening in Nigeria because they rely on the ambassador to feed them accurate information. And that is not happening because they've been bribed. 
And that is why people are dying in Nigeria. Nigeria is the only place in turmoil, not making it onto the front pages of newspapers all over the world. Nobody talks about it because they are all compromised. They've been bribed. We don't need your one Nigeria to survive. They try, can, can you imagine the nonsense? They brought in their food blockade. They said we'll not send food to the south. They are appreciable goods. So the items got spoiled in the north. The government now turned around to pay them almost 500 billion. They are the ones that said they will not sell their goods to the south. Their goods are now rotten in the north. And the government paid them composition of nearly 500 billion. And you're in one Nigeria. Tomorrow morning, you idiotically wake up in the morning and say, I'm a Nigerian. As I said before, you know, before I used to blame white people for racism, I no longer blame them for it. Because we are the cause of racism. Our stupidity as, the bl as black people is responsible for the way we're being treated all over the world. Very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. We don't need them to survive. We don't need them. And we can give them the oil and gas for free. As I've said before, allow me to repeat. The oil, apart from granting citizenship to every northern Christian, I mean call north, I mean the Sharia, Arewa, Janjaweed North, you will all live in Biafra land where you can practice religion without fear or favor. Another thing we are going to do is to pipe free oil and gas across the whole of West Africa. In Biafra, Oduduwa will receive oil and gas for free. You see, Benin Republic, oil and gas for free. Togo will receive oil and gas for free. Ghana the same. All the way to heaven knows where, I think, um, Western Sahara. Do you know why? Because we want the economies of all these countries to grow as well because they're going to buy our goods and services. They will buy our goods and services. That is why we need the economies to grow as well. A Biafra will offer free oil and gas to them. Thank you so much for your patience to watch from the beginning to the end. I hope you have learned something from the video you have just watched. The video you have just watched is to bring information to your doorstep and for educational purpose. It is not to demonize anybody. Let us watch continuously and see who can be able to make a sense out of every nonsense we are seeing. We must continue. We move. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra is here. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you notify each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you and remember bless. Bye-bye. See you again.